April 11th, uh, 2016, and we would start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Uh, next we uh, have roll call, please. Mr. Worcesterberth. Present. Ms. McGuire. Here. Mr. Cummings. Here. Mr. Gajewski? Here. Ms. Grasco? Here. Mr. Weed? Here. Mr. Fire? Here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, next we go to agenda additions. Is there anyone uh, on the board? Anybody have anything they want to add to the agenda? Okay. Hearing nothing, uh, we'll move on to the next item is uh, public comment. And uh, in the first public comment, we ask that you fill out a card that are available in the back. You have four minutes to speak. We uh, ask that you go to the podium. Give us your name. Do we have any cards, Bob? We do not. No cards. Okay. And most of you have heard this drill before. We do have a second public uh, comment at the end uh, where no cards are required, uh, but you still have to stand up there. Okay, uh, consent agenda, uh, approval of the minutes. Anybody see anything? Uh, There's a typo, public hearing. Public hearing, yes. yes. Public hearing, <laughs> yes. Public hearing. Public? Well, yeah. I thought that's what it was called. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I don't know, if, you know, uh, right in that same part, uh, <coughs> Mr. Sponberg is B E R G. I don't know if the spelling of people's names is. Well, I thought I looked him up in the, on his card and that's what it said, but I could be mistaken there too. I'll double check it. Okay. I think it's E R, but check it out. Um, anything else? Um, okay, uh, in the recent two weeks, we have, uh, Township has paid bills to the tune of $61,688.09. Uh, um, is there anybody that has a question uh, about the bills for the two-week period? Anything at all that anybody has any question about? Okay, not hearing any. That next, the third part of our consent agenda is uh, informational reports. Superintendent has three, and community development coordinator uh, has one. Um, does anybody have any uh, anything in the three? A uh, reminder that uh, work session coming up. Fire department brush truck purchase and police department computer uh, server purchase. Yes. Uh, why is it that we bought a brush truck from 2001? Well, we had a $15,000 budget and um, that appeared to be a reasonable purchase based on comparative shopping. Um, and the, the condition, frankly, before we got it was presumed to be good. Turned out the vehicle did have a few issues which have been rectified, but basically looking at the demands of the service, the type of vehicle we needed, that was the, the age era that we were uh, able to, to hit with our budget target. Because huh. they've had very aged equipment for a long time and it seems like we're now again buying very aged equipment again. In this case that, that is true although these vehicles are um, the, the use they're put into is fairly harsh it doesn't lend itself necessarily to a new vehicle but candidly had we known then what we know now we might have considered a new vehicle coming back to the board and putting or something within the last three or four years because yeah. you know here we are buying a vehicle that's 15 years old that we definitely don't need stranded out in the middle of the woods no we do not given its intended service 
I kind of wondered about that too when we first voted on it, but it was recommended and selected by the fire department. Is that correct? We we had budgeted for a used vehicle there. Yes. Yeah. G given the service um, demands. Yeah. Well, it has relatively low mileage on it, doesn't it? It, it does. I think fifty-six thousand or something yeah. like that. It's not a bad looking truck. I mean, I mean, you know, cosmetically, it's a nice looking truck. Right. Barring the repairs we had to do on it, of course. But did they did they seek it out and find it, locate it, the fire department, uh, or the fire chief? They were involved in that, certainly. I'm not sure who found it initially. There were a couple of staff members looking for vehicles. So. But yeah, the, the fire department was well aware of it and, and sort of coordinated the, the search. Yeah. I would just like to see some more carefulness in our purchases like this so that we don't end up in these situations. Um, you know, especially, I mean, even though it's low mileage, it's got a lot of age. It was a municipal vehicle before, right? So. I mean, low mileage isn't really that significant mm -hmm. of a factor on a municipal vehicle as much as it is engine runtime and transmission use. I think a couple of DPW people that looked at it um, did have some concerns about it and questioned it, but I believe the fire chief was the one that said to go ahead and purchase it. Is that correct? I, th I think that is correct, yes. Although, to, to be fair to everybody involved, I don't think anybody recognized those issues or we probably would have walked away from the $500 deposit. I kind of remember thinking at the time, didn't say anything, so it's a little late, but uh, thinking at the time, we have a fire millage. Why are we going for a 15-year-old vehicle, you know? Uh, but uh, as it was presented, that the fire department was greatly involved in selecting this, and I didn't hear you say that they were protesting that they wanted something newer. Am I right? No, I, th I think the assumption was we could find a suitable vehicle for the budget amount. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Other concern I have is about the police department server yes. and what uh, some of the system specs on it seem a little older. I'm kind of wondering why we're going that route. I guess I would need to maybe talk to you about the specific concerns and then our IT consultant to comment on that, because that's, that's who put the specs together. Well, the information that I'm missing from the pack is that it doesn't describe what we're going to use it for, so it doesn't indicate the software or what we're trying to do with it. I couldn't determine whether it was enough memory, whether the CPUs were sufficient, <clears throat> whether we should be looking at something with a faster CPU and trying to get more longevity out of the server. So I, I kind of lack some parameters okay. to evaluate this with. Well, we can provide those. I think that the scenario, just so everybody's clear, is mm -hmm. the police department explained what the, the uh, recommendation was for service and then the IT folks put together the quotation based on their understanding of those needs. So there was dialogue there, but no, I do, we did not include in the packet any specifics of that exchange. So we, we can certainly do that. Yeah, I mean, I guess not to belabor the point, but it would be good to be able to know whether spending maybe a couple hundred dollars more could get us some longer longevity or, I mean, keeping in mind this is with an older operating system, which is still current, but we know that Microsoft is planning upgrades and, right. and new, new versions, and with it comes more bog. So, <laughs> you know, maybe some extra horsepower and the uh, CPU would be something we should consider now as opposed to regretting later. Okay. Just a thought. Thank you. Sure. Are these questions something that you can look into before we go ahead any further? Uh, they are. I mean, certainly I can share the information um, with Tim and, and Aaron as mm -hmm. to the questions they're asking, and then okay. um, we can move ahead on that basis because we'll, we'll wind up, I think, soliciting a competitive quote anyway. Okay. So this just wasn't part of the original plan is why it's being raised at this point for a yeah. computer upgrade. 
Okay, uh, Ann had an item, a uh, consent agenda item uh, regarding uh, the naming of uh, Ballfield uh, Number One and the Wurtsmouth Outdoor Sports Complex. And it's actually bringing back a name that was granted uh, some time ago. Uh, and uh, anybody have any questions about that? Sounds like a worthy deal to go ahead with. Any comments? Okay. Um, you have a new sign ordered or? No, uh, we have the offer from uh, Truly Yours to make the sign. Okay. And then I gave a picture of yeah. what they were proposing. Yes. Right. Basically, they read the article in the newspaper. Nobody contact, as far as I know, nobody contacted anybody within the township in regard to putting a sign back on there. Mm -hmm. um, besides Mr. Ostrander offering to do mm -hmm. the sign. Okay, that's Mr. Ostrander from Truly Yours. Yes. Okay. Well, we appreciate his offer okay. very much. So. Okay, uh, anything else on the uh, informational items in the consent agenda? All right, I need a motion to accept the consent agenda. So moved. Okay. Good morning. Um, the motion is by Mr. Weed with support from Mr. Gayeski. <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Westerparth? Yes. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Guire? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay, uh, next we go uh, to the superintendent. He has a couple of action <coughs> items tonight. Well, kind of a short agenda I might explain to people. Um, um, every, <laughs> everybody gets a... Uh, we have the explanation we'll make up for how short it is. <laughs> no, uh, Bob's been on vacation, so uh, he's the guy that puts us together, and uh, so uh, if it seems short, uh, that's a main reason why. So, Okay, uh, first item is uh, Spicer Group uh, Odor Corrosion Control Study. Yes. Uh, at the last meeting, uh, a proposal from Spicer was presented to conduct a study specifically for odor and, and corrosion control uh, issues that exist in the force main between pump station 4 and pump station 25. Um, there was some concern expressed at the time by uh, the board that the proposal was relatively open-ended. Um, in that it, it was quoted on a time and materials basis. I contacted Spicer. They've now converted that to a not to exceed proposal, so I am pre presenting that proposal in revised form for the board's consideration. Bob, when you con contacted Spicer and asked them to, uh, you know, use this uh, $5,000 cap idea, did they give you any blowback that this was going to hurt the project or anything like that? No, uh, uh, but uh, candidly, my expectation based on discussion, not only the discussion I had with a representative here, but in general is they will then work till they hit the 5,000. So if there's additional work that needs to be done, they would notify us. If, if the effort is more expansive than originally anticipated, I would expect them to notify us and then we'd talk about any additional fee okay. if, if needed. You would expect they would notify you yes, or you know they will? Well, I, I, I would expect that, and, and if that's the, a concern, I can certainly advise them of that. Okay. Please do, please. Okay. Um, anybody? Uh, Who came up with the 5000 Did they offer the $5,000 figure, or did we say not to exceed $5,000, and they said okay? They gave the original quote of 5000 on a time and materials basis, and then they were willing to convert that to not to exceed. So basically it should not go over the 5000 and they won't have to notify us. And that's their best estimate based okay. on the information they have, yes. Okay, I need a motion to accept the proposal as uh, with the $5,000 cap. So moved. Okay, support, anyone? I will support that. Okay, you and me. <laughs> What's that got to say? <laughs> <laughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Gajewski. Yes. 
reluctantly. <laughs> Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Worcesterworth? Yes. Mr. Weed? No. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. All right. Um, next item is uh, some employee and geographical shuffling of the administration, Oscoda Township Administration. Bob? Yes, it's a, it's a limited shuffle. <laughs> um, uh, in keeping with the notice provided at the last meeting that our current executive secretary will be leaving employment of the township, um, as is normally the case, uh, we try to evaluate opportunities for improving efficiency and economy in, in terms of the way we're structured. Uh, to that end, there's been intermittent discussion in past years regarding the potential benefits of consolidating the superintendent and community economic development offices in one location with shared secretarial support. Uh, the current scenario gives us an opportunity to consider that and in particular, the thought here is that we will relocate the Community Development Office to the Township Hall. There's two rooms uh, available between the superintendent and clerk offices as they're currently situated. Uh, the prospective benefits would include cost savings uh, as a result of eliminating a part-time administrative secretarial position estimated to be $16,750 approximately, but probably more importantly, uh, a more efficient and cohesive administrative effort uh, could be uh, undertaken as a result of improved coordination and communication. Uh, that ap approach would allow better in-person and over telephone access to the community development uh, office as compared to how it's currently situated. And uh, in the final analysis, uh, I think it would allow the ability to direct limited administrative resources where they're most needed uh, more effectively. There are, uh, however, as you might expect, some negatives. Uh, there would be spatial limitations uh, as compared to the current multiple location arrangement. For anybody who's had the opportunity to visit Ann's office, that might be a little bit of an understatement. Therefore, file storage and uh, access will have to be well planned. We have a project underway, a significant project with the VA currently. Um, and uh, the uh, level uh, direct access to tenants in the Ani Medical Center uh, would be limited as compared to uh, the current scenario and that would need to be uh, coordinated moving forward. Also, the, the total level of administrative secretarial support would be reduced. Uh, on that basis, consideration might be given if we were going to head down this path to upgrading the executive secretary position to an office coordinator, uh, which is the next grade up. And I had provided for the board's information an excerpt from a superintendent's report done in 2010 when we uh, consolidated in creating the community development coordinator position. Uh, and in that excerpt, I cautioned that, uh, uh, or indicated that caution should be exercised in maintaining adequate administrative capacity uh, with the township to meet expectations and needs. Uh, we've been challenged in that regard in recent years. Uh, longer serving board members are, I think, well aware of the path we followed there. Um, but uh, in the final analysis, I think this consolidation uh, would, would result in net gains. And uh, what I'm seeking this evening from the board is feedback as to whether uh, this seems like a reasonable approach because uh, in recruiting for a new employee, uh, we would, we would want to be able to provide accurate information as to the circumstance of, uh, circumstances of employment as to who they would be working for and the, the structural uh, approach that the administration would be taking moving forward. Okay. Any discussion or questions? Bob, the position that would be eliminated um, secretarial, is, do they have an opportunity to apply for this executive position or the office manager position? They would. Uh, I, I, I guess I would. Uh, yes, they would. Um, without getting into specifics, though, um, we have another position open, too, that 
potentially could accommodate that employee should there be a desire to do that in terms of a transfer. I seem to be lacking a lot of information regarding this. Um, and it seems to be a little more in depth, maybe something more suited to a work session. Is that? What do you think you're missing, I guess? Well. Only because I'm in the building every day, maybe I could answer it. You know, what are the cost savings? How are the tenants going to deal with issues over at the Yanni building? Um, what does it mean challenged in enough administrative support? Um, you know, if we're going to change the position to a full-time position, can we keep it a part-time position but still provide enough support? There's just, there just doesn't seem to be a plan associated with this from my end, from not working in the building every day. It just seems to be, hey, let's just consolidate these. We'll save some money and hopefully we'll figure out some stuff later. I, but Bob kind of said that there's about a $16,000 savings. Um, Mary's position is already full-time. I don't think you could cut that back to a part-time position, to be honest, and, you know, and take on some of the duties that in Ann's office as well, as far as the, and to, this is, you know, just my opinion anyways, but, and with, as far as the lease people or the auto, you know, we have technology, phones, emails, text messages. I mean, it's not like we're 50 miles away where Ann can't run out there. She's going to be back and forth out there anyways to deal with the VA clinic. And Gary's office wasn't located there, you know, when we had tenants and stuff there, too. I mean, they call our office as well as far as taxes, and we keep records in the treasurer's office for some of the lease things, too. And like I expressed to Ann with some of the spatial needs, our office is way bigger than what we need it to be, so there's plenty of room to move her stuff that she works with every day and then leave some of the stuff that she doesn't really get into like we do over at the hospital. So but maybe Bob can address So some with of that things. position being full time already, is the additional workload gonna be an overburden on the person or um it could be a challenge. I think it depends on the person, frankly. I, I think it's workable, or, or frankly, I wouldn't be suggesting it, but that, that's a valid question. The, the position that would be eliminated is 20 hours a week, so it's, it's fairly limited. We have, Mary's already outsourced a few of the other things that she's been responsible for, like the work orders for the DPW has been turned over to Tammy and utility billing. She now does that process. She has the radio and everything else there. And I think that some other things have been addressed that Mary takes care of that are a little bit easier to turn over responsibility to. I agree with the consolidation, but I like to see a plan put in place before we can do anything. Because there's a lot of unanswered questions just listening to Jamie and Aaron. There's a lot of unanswered questions. Uh, I'm for the <coughs> consolidation, but I'd like to see a plan put together. I guess I don't understand what you mean by a plan per se. Well, where are they going to put her? You're just saying you're putting her in your office, and then another one that says between Chris and Mary, Mary's Anne's, office. Anne's going to go in Mary's office, my understanding. Well, I'm going to see, see a plan put together. Yeah, I mean, somewhere because this is, this is not a. It, it's a spare in a moment thing to me. Uh, I like to see something put together. It's what we're going to have to work with to start with. If we have to make changes, so be it. But let's have something down so we know where we're going with it. I I have to disagree. We've talked about it at a couple different work sessions uh, about consolidating and bringing in downtown before. We've talked about it at the township hall. Chris is already, you know, it, to me, it doesn't. I, I guess I don't understand the plan concept. I don't either because if we were to hire an employee, we wouldn't have to have a plan for the employee. We would and have the employee let's face has to it, learn the job. Um, I'm not sure. in this office and the other office this is that has a vacancy in it that this person could possibly take if they weren't mm -hmm. interested in applying for the vacancy that's coming open can't stay open forever. You know, you can't keep putting that off to fill it if that's you know to give her a choice to take it. The present holder of that job has said she will stay until May something? May 4th. Yeah, until May 4th. And May 4th. And you had to coax her to stay that long. That right? is correct. <laughs> right. So to me, we've already advertised, this will be the second week we've advertised for it. 
I mean, if we're going to change the position to the office manager thing, it needs to get approved so it could get advertised. Um, if you don't approve it tonight, wait two more weeks. Mary's going to be gone. Mary's not going to have a chance to even work with this person at all. So to me, I think you're creating a bigger mess by waiting. Because I think, like, like you say, us that work there, we've, we've kind of already talked about know it. what's going on and, and know what to do to make it work between all the different offices and stuff. I don't know. Should we write it down that Mary's going to leave and so-and-so is going to move in this office and then so-and-so? That may have to change. There's nothing set in stone. This is trial and error, but I think we've pretty much got it figured out where it's going to run pretty smooth. And if not, we'll have to adjust it along the way. But to sit down and say we have to write out a plan of what we're going to do, it's kind of This was written like some people have talked about it but this is the first time you're seeing this it leaves you very vague to that point you know being new to the board since february i'm not privy to the conversations that have happened um, i do i do see what it says and I, my question comes more to uh, a, a point that bob had made a moment ago just a concern about whether or not the job would be more than what someone could fulfill and it would depend on the skill set that we would find. So it's a little hard to match a job rec to, uh, to the uh, applicants as and kind of keep both sides moving at the same time. You know, normally the job rec is pretty stable and you figure out exactly what you need and you find your applicants, but it's hard to figure out whether the applicants are going to fit if the job rec is changing as well. So that was my only thought from what I've seen presented so far. Well, it's not going to change that much, is it? It's still going to be basically a secretarial position who's going to be doing <clears throat> the same thing Mary did for you and the same thing that Mary, the other Mary did for you. We have two Marys here, yeah. just in case, <laughs> yeah. in case you're yeah. getting lost. Yeah. It's two right. Marys. But, but two Marys with the I mean, if you hire somebody from the outside, yeah. they may have all the secretarial skills in the world, but they're mm -hmm. not going to know their routine, regardless Correct. of they got to learn is. that anyways. Right, so there's, you know, no matter who gets it, whether it's be somebody that's within the already in there that, that knows the routine or somebody that we bring in, they're not going to know exactly what Bob, what, what Mary did for Bob or what the other Mary did for Ann. They're going to have to kind of learn as you go, just like everybody does with a new job. But to Aaron's point and Martin's point, Tim's point, I mean, that should all be documented at this point in time. We should know exactly what the duties are and what's going to transpose to the different people. Okay. <laughs> I guess, and I Some don't mean this in a bad that way, but what does that mean to you guys? <laughs> well, I guess I'm Seriously. used to, if I hire somebody in private business, I mean, <clears throat> we're all TS certified, quality certified, and everything has to be documented. Yeah. Your position has to be documented, what you do every day. So, so. you need, you, so you're asking for a list of duties, what Mary does, before well I think that that's the base of a plan for divvying things up but it just sounds like it's it, it's vague and broad to me well I guess I have to disagree with that because I don't think it is I don't well, either, but some of the information that, that uh, you've brought forward here just it wasn't in here so we didn't know anything about that it's right I, well and I think it's just from us working in the office 40 hours a week Monday through Friday every day I mean, me work. I mean, for how many years with Mary and with you know. If something needs to be done, we jump in and do it if necessary. So yeah, I mean, you know, no but these things that, matter on the trustee side of things. That you know, we still care about uh, employee um, their work burdens, their morale, several aspects about employees uh, to ensure that everything correlates the way that it should. Um, that's all part of the factors of this decision making process. And with limited information, um, I, it's hard to make those decisions. I guess I don't understand that. I'm completely lost. Well, just for clarification's sake, the reference to the um, office coordinator, uh, my thought was if we, we, we've advertised for the executive secretary, we can provide a copy of that job description. Uh, it isn't, the duties will not change dramatically from that. We have a copy that was put together recently of those duties. But in the end, if we can find somebody who, who fits the bill through the recruitment process and we're expecting them to take on more responsibility, 
the thought was we may want to, to acknowledge that through um, going with the uh, elevated classification. In terms of the organization, I, I guess certainly we can provide more information, but we have uh, two offices open. I don't, I don't really see uh, the functions of my job or Ann's job changing much. We're, we're going to be in a position where we're going to be able to communicate better, proximity is going to be a lot better, and I think that's going to result in some efficiency, and hopefully we will find that if we get the right employee, uh, we can make this work on a shared secretarial basis. So we can provide more information if, I, if we know exactly what it is you're after, but that is really it in a nutshell. Um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, when you bring Ann in, you going to bring Ann's Mary with her for a short term? The idea was 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 not you know, potentially Mary could move into another position that's open and she would be available to provide support on it uh, and cooperate, but but not right in the administrative area there. Well, I think you've said the couple times that getting the key person is is the keystone to all of this, really. Um, are you advertising just in Oscoda or the surrounding area? Surrounding area also. Okay. Tell us, Alcona County. Well, Michigan Works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. My, my view is um, uh, your secretary, Mary, has, even though she wants to be uh, out of there as far as her responsibility may Tell me again. I believe it's the fourth. Okay. Yeah. But am I not <coughs> correct that she has said that she will stick around for as long as it takes for training and overlap? Mm. Well, I, don't, I don't know if no, that's I, the case. I'm not <laughs> sure of that. I think she has other plans. Yeah, um, she's so. doing other things. Did I dream that up? Did she I'm said she she said she'd stay around and help uh, overlap? I think she already did that for two weeks. Yeah. Well, I, th I think that that's it. <laughs> she oh, she extended already yes, for two weeks. Right. Okay. Ooh. And gave six yep. weeks notice, yep. and here we are halfway through it. Yep. So, so we need to get somebody in and get them trained, or this whole plan that you want written down is for the birds anyway. I think what you were saying, one of the things that you said, Aaron and Steve, you know, about morale and overburdening them, I think that's one, one of the reasons why, and Bob just said it again, that about moving, upgrading it to a, a different level, a grade pay level, because of the extra duties or more things you know, that, that they're going to be have to be working with. And again, you know, my office is there that helps with the leases and does different things too. And like Chris said, we are always in it together. We are gonna get whatever we gotta get done to get it done, so. We may grumble about it, but we get it done. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in addition to the 16, oh, almost $17,000, but if you upgrade it and that pay more, nice. then it'll that'll cut into that savings. Somewhat, I think that's that uh, but Anne's going to end up with a uh, full-time secretary instead of someone that walks away at twelve o'clock noon. Uh, if you get the right person that can handle the job, that's a plus, you know. Anne is also the downtown development director. Downtown development director. <laughs> Uh, that name and title itself indicates that, you know, being downtown is at least equally as important as uh, handling the recent transformations that are going on out at the uh, Oni Medical Center, but that, that should iron out. I, I would hope that we could keep her out there for a little while until that gets further along toward completion. The VA... For my two sons, um, I, I think I would, I, I need to be, and Bob and I discuss this. Um, you know, it's not just the VA expansion project that's happening, it's the outside work that's occurring right now impacts the current tenants that are there, and you mm -hmm. do need somebody that is overseeing to make sure parking, employees, all those things flow together, signage and stuff, because obviously we have, you know, we have to get patients to where their doctors are and so yep. on. So me there during that process is, is important. That's starting actually tomorrow. The um, excavators have arrived and they're pretty much going on that. So we're, yep. you know, we're hoping that should be wrapping up depending on whether, you know, you know, in, in the May time frame, uh, June at the latest. So, um, uh, you know, Mary, again, for, for 
Mary with an A, which would be my Mary, um, uh, will, would be available to work with the person that would be taking over um, for my items, which a lot of my items are similar, obviously, to Bob's items. Mm -hmm. For grant writing, for follow-up on grants, I mean, we share, you know, we, we uh, both Marys jointly do the reporting together and so on. So, you know, my Mary would be available for that knowledge as well for training uh, moving forward with the new person so um, obviously it's going to have some challenges uh, but there it would be good to be in the down you know in the office and be able to when I have questions that come up that I need to talk to Lorna or uh, Nancy about that I can just quickly walk down the hall or you know or, or a lot quicker than sometimes you know picking up the phone and and, um, and then them having to make copies fax me stuff everything else we could just handle things quickly so but I'm sure it'll have growing pains as well I have to say that it really would be prudent if there was a kind of hat write-up, uh, something that this person who's been in this position for 18 years could put in writing for whoever this next person is, whether there's a full three weeks. It's already been done. Yeah, it's already done. It's done. been done. Oh, there is one. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. Like I say, we've, we've all held hands and joined together and said, this is what we got to do. We got to do. I cleaned out the second office, where it used to be my office. Yeah. Um, got that all. It's completely empty now for the new secretary to come in, clean the closet. Um, we're going to clean the files out. So we're we're adapting. Jim's volunteered to give his office up if necessary, right, Jim? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> but it has been an ongoing working together thing here. Um, I don't know. I I mean I I look at it as. We're the ones that yeah. are going to be dealing with it, and we think it's going to work, and we think it's going to be put together. You know, we already know, and like I say, some of the other jobs have already been dispersed and explained. If, if need be, we can do them, kind of thing. So, I think you're just creating more problems by waiting to not do it right away. You're going to have two jobs that aren't filled with anybody, and who's going to pick up all that slack? I, yeah, I think it's going to be more chaos because if Bob doesn't have somebody, then we're right. going to have to then do it. Then who's going to do all that? You know, yeah. <laughs> what would you like from us tonight? Well, I, originally, I guess my my hope was that we could establish a direction one way or the other. Um, if there is concern about that, certainly we could talk about it further at the work session. And then if there's clarification that's needed in terms of additional information, that could be provided. But at a minimum, I guess I would like the ability to move forward and continue the recruitment process mm -hmm. and, and interviews and so forth. Because if we don't, if we aren't able to find a suitable candidate and make a recommendation at the next meeting, the opportunity for training is going to go by the wayside. And that's not going to be in our best interest. Okay. Well, um, do you need an action on the moving it to the office manager to the level five thing tonight so that we can re-advertise for that? Or does that really not matter because you would just up, move them up if that's what we decided? We, we could move them up or, okay. or we could modify the advertisement except the applications we have already, which... Right. But you do the advertisement is now and then after a certain period of time, then they move to the next level, we, you know, we could. once you've established that you can handle it, then we will move you to this position and not do it right idea. at the get-go. Mm. Yes, we certainly could. So we could go ahead and, and get this person and get them started and then reevaluate them in 90 days or whatever. Right. The only question is, for, and it may not matter, frankly, depending on the candidate, but we're going to be in a position of, of if we don't have a direction, you are going to be working for myself, potentially, and or and we don't know that yet. It may not matter to the candidate on, the, on one hand, on the other it, it could. In terms of trying to assess what the job's going to require. Well, so I'm going to make a motion that we go ahead with your plan as you've explained it here tonight with advantages and disadvantages. And uh, if I get support for that motion. Uh, and my part of my motion is if it fails and it may it sounds like it's a close uh, deal here uh then then we talk about it during the work session later this week that's part of the motion i'll second that okay okay again the motion is 
let's go ahead with what is in writing, what Bob has talked about, uh, and to facilitate, you know, g getting candidates in a timely manner and, and av availing ourselves of some training from the current Mary, both Marys really. And if you still feel that we're going too fast and you need more information, then vote no, and we'll discuss it in the a, uh, work session later this week. I just want to say, I guess one of my biggest complaints is that I've always thought we always took too long to hire people, that the mm -hmm. position stays empty. Well, that's what I'm trying long, to do so, is yeah. free. So that's so. good. Anything else, folks? Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Cummings. <laughs> I'm going to say no. I'd like to bring it up at the work session. Mr. Gajewski? No. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Worcester-Barth? No. Mr. Weed? No. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion has failed. Um, okay. So change the agenda for the right. work session. Right. What uh, information are you looking for then exactly so Bob can bring it to the work session? Normally when there's a organizational structural change, there's, like I said, there's a plan that's outlined in it. It shows the job duties and titles that will be accomplished, how that's going to affect on a workload basis, whether hours need to change for it. Is this really a feasible workload to accomplish things efficiently? Uh, because like in the case of some other things, other departments were made cutbacks. It's created quite a strain on those departments. So uh, it, a lot of details that need to be gone over for how this whole thing is going to work to ensure that the township can still function efficiently. Okay. Any, anybody else have any? I guess I'd like to see the write-ups of the current positions and what they, exactly what they do. Detailed out. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's totally fair. Um, next. Um, you have an uh, informational item involving some of our guests tonight, Pickleball Community Center use request. I do. Um, as I was putting this report together, um, the uh, request was received from the Oscoda Area Pickleball and Recreation Association. I had asked Mr. Absidus in my absence to uh, talk with the folks involved. Um, I note that we've had discussions with representatives of the group in the past um, about uh, similar arrangements, uh, but uh, I would suggest that the proposal at hand raises some important questions, some of which uh, I would characterize as likely policy issues. Um, and by that I mean uh, what, as I understand the proposal, uh, what is being requested is uh, access to the facility uh, when we are closed uh, without staff being present. Um, there would not be insurance provided on behalf of the group and the fees that are being proposed are different than our standard fees. So not to sound overly negative here though, but I think it's important to, to call out uh, the specifics as to what questions might be raised amongst others. So given that, my thought was that we may want to refer this to the work session, but that is obviously at the board's discretion. Comments? I do have one. I noticed that they only wanted to propose uh, through the end of May, for the month of May. And I was wondering if that has to do with anything, maybe the anticipating that the community center wouldn't be open for the summer, or would they be interested in longer or more months if, if, the, if the community center were open? I wondered what that might be about. I think there, there's, a, there's I, an answer to this. I don't, I don't mean to put words in their mouth. The uh -huh. three gentlemen sitting back here. Yes, I get it. <laughs> I'm guessing that because of the weather that we've been having, uh, you know, this is not a typical a April. I don't think they thought ahead this much, but you never know what May is going to be like. If it's anything like this month, you know. Yes. Uh, so they're, they're not counting on a beautiful May with flowers and daffodils and stuff. Yeah. 
I, I think they, they're asking for eight days in May, yeah. and they're willing to pay us 50 bucks a day. Um, yeah. We didn't ask for insurance. This board voted, I think, six to one to have archery in the, uh, in the uh, community center without insurance. The gentleman that presented the archery proposal kind of indicated he wasn't interested in even researching insurance, and that was okay with this board. I would think pickleball is a little bit more safe than uh, than shooting arrows all over the place. And and we asked him about how what the age limit for kids was, and they couldn't give us one. They didn't they didn't really say, you know. It's up to common sense or judgment, you know. That scares me a little bit. I was the one no vote on that, but but anyway, I I can't help but throw that out again. So uh, mm -hmm. I would be willing to, as the supervisor, be the guy that goes there on Tuesdays and Thursdays to open it up, and uh, maybe we could work on someone that would close it up. Uh, I don't think I can be there at 12 or 12.15. We talked about medical trips, to, mm -hmm. and I usually don't get back in town by 12. So, But I, I'm around at 9, 9.15 or something like that. So I, there's an offer, you know, I, um, eight days. Didn't we in the past decline other groups to use the facility after the closure date? The Walkers group, some couple years ago, they had they had the same requests, and we didn't let them do this. We have had requests in the past from various groups. We did uh, honor a request from this group last year for a couple of weeks. The board May. did not honor the request. No, is that correct? We, that's correct. Um, and the rate that they want to pay pay isn't that considerably less than what our actual rate is. The the. the Normal rate is $35 an hour, yes. And, and it would take somebody from our staffing to do that. I know Jim says that he could be there, but things happen and whatever else. Is it May like a peak time for you out at Old Orchard Park, Al? And we've already moved Tara and Gary to part-time positions, so probably taking them from the Old Orchard Park while everybody's trying to get moved in would be a little difficult situation for you. And I also believe that um, recently we turned down a couple that wanted to rent the community center for a wedding, and that was turned down because our season is closed then. So I guess I would like to see us take, you know, I'm, unfortunately they did get to use it in the past, but the community center closes May 1st and that's the way it should stay. They have other opportunities to go different places to play. Um, okay, the rates, an hourly rate, which uh, you know is larger than fifty bucks a day for three hours. It's nine o'clock till twelve. Uh, that's money that we would not ordinarily have after, and I don't. I think it's a, a minimal strain on on. And I know they do bring people in. Uh, they have also added members now. Maybe maybe their additions to pickleball have not increased the overall total membership uh, in the past season, but but they did bring in new, new uh, in my understanding, uh, new members. Uh, the members might come from surrounding communities, might be good for the town, people have to get some gas or hit McDonald's or something like that if they're coming from Tawas or Hale or Harrisville or something like that. I can't guarantee that's gonna happen, but it's likely. Um, I just don't see any harm in it. I, I just, the $35 an hour that we charged before, that's during the season when it's open and you have to be concerned about heat and, and things like this. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have the heat on in May. I don't think they want it on in May. So uh, um, one of you, just one of you, gentlemen wanna speak to this a little bit? I can't even afford for any of that do that. I don't know. Um, 
I think there might be some misconceptions about what we're trying to do and um, there are other communities that are looking at what we're doing here because the sport is growing so fast and the availability door places to play is at a premium and of course we're closed. In May it's a time when seasonal players uh, come back uh, to the area and the weather, we can't count on that. And then we flood down to Taos. And they're looking at, wow, how do we deal with this? They would love to be able to come to our place too. And the sport's growing so fast that now we have a tournament that's going to double in size from last year that, of course, Al can tell you was successful. And we are doing some pretty good things. And I, I think if we checked into it a little bit and maybe Bob by now you could tell, I know memberships are up, we think we're a big reason for that. Um, the difference now using the facility like we would or we're proposing, it's only a proposal, um, as opposed to the past um, when Ann um, was there and we um, were allowed to go in, now we're a corporation. If it's a matter of dollars, I mean, we can talk about it, but we think we're saving you as opposed to and then bringing some revenue in. It's a lot better, like Jim said, to get something than nothing. And why flood over to Taos if we can have something here that is the, the fastest growing sport in the country? So and then we would be changing our policy and have, letting other groups do the same thing? No, and just give them the key and say, here you go, the music. Big part of my answer is you heard the gentleman say that they they Bob, I think, suggested or asked that they do organize and uh, incorporate, and they've done so. We did. Uh, so I, they I, had I, insurance? I think, you know, it goes back to the archery example. Well, we're closed uh, then. Well, yeah. We were well, open when uh, the archery thing was But you, you have rented it to people in the past for all kinds of things, whether it's well, a, what, a gun. Well, the season was open, correct. In the summer, you haven't rented it to for like a gun and knife show or anything during the summertime? Not while well, we were closed. Uh, well, actually, I mean, the uh, wood carvers is the first weekend in May, which is they're we're closed then. Um, but it's the actual last weekend yes, then? The last yes. weekend. And I don't really know before if there were other when I think they had RVs and shot, nothing when I was there. But I guess just for clarification, you know, the. But that's I a was, benefit to the whole community, and Right, right, right. But. But the, the group did rent the facility for two summers. What, has it been two summers, Al? I mean, it was the summer that I, my last season there, and then last summer for you for, I believe, two weeks. Um, and, and it was a $35 an hour, just like we do any other rental. It was $35 an hour. And when I was there, I was there during the time, opened the door, um, or had Mary be there the entire time that they were there, the couple hours. They were in the facility. It was locked then when they were done, and we were done. Al, I think, had Tara there the entire time. I think this is a completely new concept, and you know that's why they've been talking, mm -hmm. you know, to Bob about coming in on their own, locking, unlocking, whatever. But I mean, um, you know, there is always that. Then when you see all those cars there, um, I know then people just kind of stop by. Like, oh, I thought you were closed, you're open, and you're, you know, that is something I guess I would just bring up that, that has to be dealt with, because anybody walking in off the street, would they just be allowed in and, right, I, I don't know. You could rectify that with making sure the door was closed and put a sign in the right, window. Right, it would have to be locked behind the people that were already yeah, in. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. I, I would be there to lock it. I, I would open it, hang around 15, 20 minutes, make sure it's locked, and, uh, so Again, so in any incorporated group is what you're telling me they're yeah, going to be able to go out there and use that I, facility. Well, so do we need to revise our policy? Yeah. Well, wouldn't it be a good thing to be open to anyone who can help bring good things to the community and it's not yeah. like something that... That's, um, that's my thought. I, I mean, I'm, I guess I could see it if it's a public, like the gun, the boat shows that we used to have out there, that type of thing. Right. We're talking Would about you like to come yeah. and play pickleball? You're, you're open to play events. anytime you'd like. Well, We're... We, we accept anybody. Some, some that clarification wants to play. here. I'm sorry, Andy, in terms, in terms of the nonprofit status, since um, that's kind of a key point of the discussion. When we're talking about it previously, and maybe there's a misunderstanding here, 
The thought was that if the group incorporated, we could enter into a formal lease with them they could provide insurance, they would operate the facility, the public would have access, they would provide volunteers, there would be some public benefit and some accountability. That's, that's the proposal good. at hand is a little bit different than that, and mm -hmm. the idea was if, if we were able to work towards that, at least in my mind, that kind of a concept could be brought to the board. But what we're, we're talking about tonight is a little bit so different. different. So the, from, the from lease sounds very acceptable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. That process does. And we're open to talking about all that. Because then there's an operational set of guidelines with that. Right, right. Whereas just having it open for people to come in and use it, there's no operational guideline. Yeah. I guess my question is how do we treat Warrior Pavilion? Don't people who rent it just come and pick up the key, lock it, use it, lock it, return the key? Why yes. couldn't it be the same concept? Uh, it's a community center. Yeah. Because it's a lot larger facility with other things in the building with li liability that the township is responsible for. Yeah, you got liability everywhere, though. I mean, it's a, I don't, I'm. Then why don't we just keep the community it simple. center open all year? That would solve everything. Yes. Everything. yes. <laughs> but, but, that's, but that's not a feasible plan. Hold on, hold on. Why is that not why feasible? Is it not feasible? Yeah. Well, well, we are should be something we'd be happy if we can bring in the revenue yeah, to justify it. They're not going to bring in well, the revenue to justify it. Wait a minute now. If the, if the community center brings about more programs within it, such as maybe establishing an indoor archery range that's, range that's constructed for that, mm -hmm. um, having pickleball played all year, because just like he said, when you go down south, people are playing pickleball everywhere. Well, then they come north for the summer that's right. and Absolutely. no pickleball. Every day isn't sunny at the beach. And they want to do right. it all year long. So right. if we diversified that community center into something that would make people want to use it all year long, that we could generate the revenue <coughs> we need, then that would be an ideal situation. But with the way it's going, it's always in a deficit right now. So really something needs to be done. Either the community center needs to go away, we need to have a millage for it, which other communities do in order to support having the center around all the time, or implementing broader programs to bring in more people. I, well, the third thing, I think we've done that on many, many different levels in the past. And you know, in coming in and talking to Bob, or I don't know if Ann has any of that information in her office to see the different kinds of groups that took it over on a, pri on a private basis to see, you know, to try to get that to work, and it hasn't worked. We've constantly subsidized it. And I'm not against the community center, but I am more for the millage so that we can make improvements to it, maybe get the sauna working, do other things, a minimal millage to keep the community center open, and then have it open year-round. I would vote for that. I wouldn't have any problem with that. Yeah. I'm, but sure, right now, I'm sure they wouldn't either. But, um, but it isn't going to help us in the immediate. But here, uh, the question I have for you is, um, doesn't the attendance start dropping off when the nice weather comes around? It does. It starts, it starts going down. And that happens every single year, and that happened when you were there, is that correct? It happens um, the, in the fall, people don't join until the weather changes and goes bad, and in the spring, people stop coming in and walking um, when the weather changes and all the kids are involved in Little League um, and AYSO soccer. Right. There's just, yeah, it's, it's a difficult. And, we, and we've tried that. We did that, we cut the hours back because we didn't have the revenue coming in. To, to even support what we had going on then, to have the staff there. It's even not. the utilities, you know, just to keep the lights on is, is not cheap, even with our new upgrades. So It's much less in the summer than it is in the winter, and we're not asking to have the place air conditioned or anything. It, it, that's not even but actually yeah, an option. Not even yeah. Air. Yeah. Oh, well, right. I mean, that's great, but it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. Care. If they, I, you know, you want to lease it and get the insurance and do all the things that we have to do for anybody else for the Warrior Pavilion, for instance, like Steve said. Yeah, the only thing maybe I would that's add a consideration. A, somebody brought up gun shows and events. Are we missing the boat because we're closed and not throwing yeah. that out there for everybody to use? Yeah. In a situation having been on a weekend? No, we will be, no. it them? will be opened on a weekend for an event like that because that's a public, public anybody benefit. can come and go as they wish during that event. Right. We've never turned any way anybody yeah, over that. Actually I come okay. It's been turned away. We can change that. Well, except mm -hmm. for the people for the wedding. But hasn't right. it been a while since they've wanted to do boat shows and RV shows there? Yeah, I mean, yeah it's been a long time. Because yeah. those two yeah. dwindled off and people yeah. were... Yeah. 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 They don't have the home show, they used to have the right. home show there. At the Seismic Schmidt building, remember yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. I remember going to a home show there a few years ago, so I don't know. 
been that a long was the time builders ago. room, yep, and they yeah. stopped having it. And they stopped having it because the attendance was down. Right. And the so, cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's the thing is we don't have to draw just in the community alone. So are you making a motion regarding the lease? To read it as a word. I'm not. <laughs> I think. Uh, I'll make that motion. Okay. What's the specifics on it? The specifics is we treat it exactly like Warrior Pavilion, with the exception that we're going to have to have insurance coverage from whoever is leasing it. So Liability. it's not a lease agreement? Is what lease he just well, how Mr. Stalker was talking me, about? Let me ask you, um, how do we treat Warrior Pavilion today? There, there is a lease agreement. We also have a lease form, although Warrior might be more applicable for this situation. But there is a lease form. Insurance is required, and there's a standardized fee schedule. I say we treat it exactly as Warrior Pavilion. That is my motion. Bob, do we have a deposit on the Warrior Pavilion for cleanup? Yes. We do. It's refundable. No, that's one of the least of my worries is that they're going to wreck the place or anything like I mean, that. I'm not concerned with that. You yeah. know, but if we have it in one, we got to have it at the other. Okay. Because mm -hmm. they know that if they, you know, not wreck the place, but leave a bunch of garbage around like that. They have, will have no chance of getting it the following year. I'd be the first one to say, throw the bums out. Because I'm kind of sticking my neck out here. and I'm, not they're not going to think they're going to trash the place. It's and the thing about that everything needs to be treated across the board fairly and not right. one above the other. And then we get this disparity thing where somebody comes up and says, well, you've done this for them. But not doing it for us kind of thing. I don't I don't see walkers being incorporated in 501c it, you know well and we've been bringing things to the community and community center and we have yeah. so many members that are helping with the schools and coaching and, and doing things that are really helping the community in so many ways that I don't even know if they're getting noticed but but here we're bringing in revenue with this tournament that we're not taking anything from it we we wanted it all to go to them we just want good healthy recreational activity in a place that is underutilized to to be able to be utilized right. and, I understand that. Um, we'd love it if every one of you came and tried the sport and played you, you you'd probably be out there with us and then couldn't get off the court it, <laughs> I'm gonna but, come to the tournament well <laughs> how many people are in the tournament um this year we didn't even advertise it. I just went to the people I knew in the communities that could play, and I think we're going to, we're probably on track for 20 teams, which would be um, 40 people. And we could do an even bigger one. We're hoping to build on that and have more events because it's just a mixed doubles. I mean, there could be so many other um, dub men's doubles, women's doubles, mixed uh, and singles, and the sanctioned tournaments in the other parts of the state where this is the only part of the state that doesn't have a sanctioned um, event. Um, it's just been a boom with the USAPA, which is the governing body. Uh, now the sport has, similar to the US Open, they have a USAPA pickleball open with prize money. It's mm -hmm. growing so fast, and I just would love it if Oscoda was on the map. Some other place mm -hmm. is going to be if it isn't here. Mm -hmm. um, wouldn't it be great that we've got a facility that could really help accommodate that if, if we can not only grow that in other, it isn't just pickleball, if it, if it was anything, um, like CrossFit. I mean, I know that it was brought up, well, we don't want to hurt the local gyms, but that facility could accommodate something like that that is a, a growing trend. Um, it might, there, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm just saying there's so many possibilities and people that can promote things in, in that facility that could work. Right. AYSO Soccer used to hold an indoor season there some time ago. That's correct, right, Bob? That's they had a lease and an agreement and, like, and the insurance and everything to be able to use that facility. Correct. Okay. <laughs> and no, they did, oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were done. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. No, go ahead. Um, Are you done? Yeah. Oh, did we not have a thing a couple years back for table tennis tournaments? Yeah. Yeah, I think there was. So we were over yes. that was before. <coughs> Sadly the sport didn't flourish like didn't flourish. pickleball has. And I know I've got who, a question for you. What's the name pickleball? How did that come to be? There's a couple stories. The most accurate one is um, 
this gentleman wanted to keep his children busy and he got them with some paddles and a, a, a net and set it up and their dog was named Pickles and, and Pickles the dog retrieved the balls. Oh, nice. Pickleball. Nice. Pickleball. Very nice. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> but it's not really a feeling name, I have to say. No, it's turned some people off and a lot of diehard <laughs> tennis players that thought they ne now they're playing, then they just love it. It's easier on your body and especially as you age and it, it just, it brings something for everybody. Um, Frank, and is it? Andy. Uh, Andy, I'm so sorry. Andy, so um, is there an interest to keeping this in a, in a certain price range and that's why the, you're trying to well, stay away from the insurance and these mm, other potential costs? No, um, actually we don't make anything. We're not right. as a nonprofit and sure. you know now we have over a hundred players in this area or close to it that you know would some of them would come from Hale, Agre, Tawas, even Alpina to play more um, if we could put together things we're talking about like leagues and whatnot. But what we're talking about this different this year, in the past we were allowed to play a little longer to May because of the, we the weather when they would close and they were so kind to let us in but we weren't a corporation so we just paid the strict 35 bucks an hour. Right. And we thought, well, if, if they don't have staffing in, in that issue, we talked about if it was a possibility if we were a corporation to lease it that way and then they wouldn't have to pay the staff. So the cost but, isn't an issue? Or? Well, I mean obviously it, we, we'd have to collect that from all the members because our membership is only a six month thing where right. most places like that it's a year round and right. we don't have that luxury. Um, so we're just throwing ideas around how we can accommodate that play when the weather's so bad. Um, and now this year complicates it more because I know that they're probably behind out at Old Orchard and they need staffing there where all the staff from, from the community center right. goes and we just thought, well, why not see if we can, and it could be something like a hybrid um, arrangement like you mentioned, not so much handing us the keys, but someone came and, and just unlocked the doors. But. You know, to pay the full price when we're not, we don't even have use of the full facility. We're not using the, the exercise equipment or spinning or anything. It, it's like, you know, couldn't we come to some kind of agreement that was fair? And, and something is better than nothing. This lease idea, does that appeal to you? Well, it, it would. It's if, just a word, lease. I mean, I, uh, it's still $50 and we're leasing it for $50 yeah. twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays for. Uh, Eight, eight days. Is that do a new lease for each day or I one think, lease? I no. guess just for clarification, just so the board understands, when 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 we rent the facility and it's broken down and the cost is thirty five dollars an hour to use the gym, and and then you have you know there's we look at the other space that doesn't give you entitlement to use um, if you're using the gym for the wood carver show the wood carvers didn't use the other the racquetball mm. courts or anything like right, that right, right. it's just use of the gym and then yeah. if they were going to use um, any of the other rooms we, we looked at that as a, as a cost and then there was a right. rental dumpster for garbage and all that so I right. mean although what you're saying you know Andy is $35 we're only okay. using the gym that's what we're what charging to use well, is the gym and the bathrooms in, is $35 an hour and all in, that. Okay, and that's, that's fair to say that, well. I guess. So that, that's where the breakdown when we look at leasing it out comes would, from. Would yeah. we be getting more um, possible, um, could it be rented more if it was more reasonable by all kinds of different organizations? And again, if, if it's being underutilized and you can get something in there, I mean, we well, literally don't have anybody knocking down our door, so. Right. <laughs> well, yes. Um, it, things will get better. But I, to address it, this current issue here, we've already got a motion on the table. Right. And the specifics of that, again, were what? Treated as Warrior Pavilion. With the exception, we have to come up with a lease rate. If with it's what? 35 an hour, I say we just throw 35 in an hour at this point in time and then evaluate it going forward for use of the gym. So you are going to charge them $105 for a Tuesday? I I'll guess I'll look for the board direction. I'll amend my motion to look for the board direction to come up mm -hmm. with an appropriate. You said it was a $50 a day? Yes. 40 
Well, oh, 50, 50. yeah, 50, 50. Yeah, they're, they're going, they're proposing they pay us 400. It's yeah. I, I do have to say a couple things here. Please. I'm, I'm not against what they want to do. I've, we've always, if you have a something you want to do that benefits whatever, that's great. We, we don't have many people in the summertime come and ask to use the facility. Um, we did have one that I had to turn down because it was uh, at a time not only that we weren't open, but we also were going to utilize the back gym for the Halloween. And we start building at that time. That was one of the big reasons they couldn't use it on top of it. We were closed. However, there has been other people, and this is during the time that we're open, other organizations that have asked us, me specifically, to let them use it. And, and they, they've asked me for a break. I, I want a deal. Can you get me a deal? And I've given no deals to nobody. Um, it's always been $35 an hour. And, and we do that just because of this. You know, when you gave them a deal, well, why can't I get a better Correct. deal? I, I'm this, I'm mm -hmm. this. And it's right. always $35 an hour, always. Right. And it was we a specific use it. place in the, in the facility. We have a large facility that you have access to. Uh, and we do have doors closed and keys, things locked. There's equipment, electronic equipment, other equipment that we do keep locked. I don't feel comfortable just giving somebody the key and saying, go ahead and do it. Unlike Warrior Pavilion, there, there's not those types of things in there. It's kind of a smaller area. Um, could it be done? Yeah. Uh, um, but $35 is what we, we charge everybody. There, there's been no exceptions. And then for, for clarification's sake, that's per gym per hour. And we don't yeah. need to be a corporation because yeah. we've done that in the past. So. I mean, we're just offering something different with this, and then you wouldn't have to worry about the staff. I mean, because I, otherwise, there's there's really nothing, no nothing in this for us at all. Then, hopefully, you continue <coughs> to do what you've done before and let us have some extended play, and then pay that fee. But, you know, you've got to have staff. Um, I don't know. I just think that you're you could be missing an opportunity because there are so many other communities that are looking at coming here and it would really help with their overcrowding and it might be setting the stage for better things to come and maybe this can't be settled today but um do you have any other thoughts jim yeah i'm watching the price go up from the yeah it 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 from, sure changed from, from fifty dollars a day uh, now it now we're at two hundred and ten dollars Per day I mean, for the two gyms. Right. And, Jeez. And, and in all fairness, and, and I know, um, you know, Al's done this. I did it. We had teams. Okay, Little League are struggling just like you're saying right now. Little League, um, uh, varsity sports are all right now trying to share gyms out of the Osco to school and now have snow on all of their fields. So they're all struggling. Oh. They, as a team, pull together their coaches, come up with the $35 out of, I don't know where they come up with it, comes out of their own pocket, their team players, whatever. They have a, pra they use, they, they hold practices sometimes and they rent part of the gym. They've done it through the winter to work together. I mean, so for us to sit there and, or the board to say, we're gonna do a reduced rate for this, you're, well, it's not fair to the people that have. So you do have $5. people knocking on the door, unlike. Um, no, this is during the season. During the season, it, it, that's during the is when we're open. We're open right now, and right? And they're wanting right. to facilitate the opening, the maintenance, the supervisory role. Somebody's there to monitor the situation. There, staff members there. It's so during the hours of operation. Yes. <coughs> yeah. It's not during a closed season. No. I'm just saying it's a set thirty-five dollar an hour. Gym Whether there's somebody there or not, it's still <laughs> wear and tear put onto the facility regardless. I'm having the lights on. Uh, but yeah, it, it can be justified no matter how with all this stuff. But well. the thing, the thing is, is, is that if we have a policy that sets that it needs to be a certain way, it should be that across the board. Now, whether it's a thing if we look at that rate should be changed for everybody, but this whole picking and choosing who gets what just because somebody asks, well, then I guess we should give them a discount because they talked to my heartstrings kind of thing. That, that just isn't going to work for a government. Um, but I will support uh, Mr. Wusterbar's motion if it's at $35 an hour, the normal rate, unless, which we should have it added to the work session, that we discuss this whole 
the whole community scenario. center, future of the community yep. center during that work session and finds out something different. I'm fine with that, and then we can adjust at the work session that needed. I would just like to clarify for a minute, Mr. Weed. So you're suggesting that if we go out there, then we would pay the $35 an hour that we paid in the last two years for the couple of weeks that we've been out there. But in addition to that, you want us to have liability insurance. That's, we, have not that's had we wouldn't need it. We were because we paid membership, and really we signed the you know. So, but the facility is closed in May. But the facility uh, was closed the last two years in May. We did play. For that's correct, but hours. it didn't come to the board. Well, and there were staff so members there. I'm sorry. Well, maybe a mistake <laughs> on a few people's parts. Well, uh, one one distinguishing so. factor there. <laughs> One distinguishing factor is mm -hmm. that there there were staff members there, and here we're talking about not being staff members. Right. So essentially, the township's being asked to accept that risk. And with all due respect to you gentlemen, nobody's suggesting that there is any undue risk here. But still, we have no uh, accountability from an oversight and supervisory standpoint. That is true. Are you incorporating as a nonprofit? Yes. Yes. We are. Okay. 501c3. And we want to work with the township and possibly the schools and other townships in how we can accommodate all recreation that can bring good things. We're, we're not trying to get a, so much of a deal, but we have, there's a difference between what, what we're doing. We actually have brought something here. We have brought new members. We have, we are bringing good things with the tournament and um, we just want to find some happy medium where we can address being able to play in a facility when the weather's bad it doesn't hurt this community when we all rush down to Taos to play and then then they can't handle it I mean that that's a shame really um, Ella, when that's right there Ella, I guess I'm, it, I'm okay maybe I am the new guy on the block here it, and I get to play that card for a couple months <laughs> but <laughs> but I'd like to good. ask a, a, a question that it, just I, I Maybe I just didn't get the answer the last time I asked you, but you say you have uh, roughly 40 members. Is that yes. right? Yes. For, <clears throat> for, oh, for the tournament. Oh, for the tournament. Just regular members. Okay. Um, we have a lot of seasonal members, sure. but Al could tell you that, that many days, right now we have, what were the 20 people there? I wasn't there today, but I mean. Uh, yeah. But we have 40 that are regular players just in, in Is it our like club a league, league, like a bowling league, where you go and it's like you know, you've got no. your teams? Oh. It's not like that. It's, it's no, open, it's a come and but go. they want to do that. The other communities want to. I, I was see. meeting with them in Tawas just last Friday, and, and we were talking about that kind of thing. Um, well, so there's, here's where I'm going in my head with this listening to this conversation. So if it's, you know, if I was to go to the, the bowling alley and I wanted to join a league, it cost me so much to be there every time I went, and I'd have to go, otherwise my team would want to shoot me because I wouldn't be there every week. Right. So, you know, for 40 people and $210, that's $5.25 a game. I guess I'm kind of struggling with why is that a pro cost prohibitive point here? Why are we trying to nickel and dime this conversation? We, would, we were okay with the way that we did it before, but we thought that maybe if staffing staff, was an issue know, it would yeah, i mean i see yeah, yeah and that's kind of our, our migratory workers here uh, <laughs> um, okay i i see the point but as we've said the 35 dollars didn't have to do with staffing it had to do with it's what the gym costs it's what it is it's not because there's somebody at the receptionist who's smiling at you it's what it well, is. It, if you take out a membership yeah. and you have it, you don't have to deal with that. So right. it's a little different because they're only open for six months. And, yeah. and now <coughs> us being a member that played there all year, mm -hmm. now we've got to pay in, on a different way. And forming the nonprofit, we thought, well, we could address that and maybe mm -hmm. work on things <clears throat> like this or... <sighs> It's not a good situation with it being closed six months. It just makes it difficult with the weather and so many people wanting to play indoors. So we... Right, so as we, various folks here talked, you know, it looks like there's some thoughts about maybe making that open, but 
I, I guess it still comes back to the question of regardless of whether the OCC is open all year round or not, there's still going to be a cost to it. Yes. And so and if it was open all year long, would you be open to the $35 an hour? Because, I mean, I don't see the, the point about the $50. I haven't quite figured out what the the cost point is Well, here. it wouldn't be $35 an hour. That's not what it breaks down to for us to have a membership yeah. to be there any hours that you want, which to use the whole facility, obviously. So right. you're, that's, you're not comparing apples to apples. Well, it, no, you're renting the gym is what the $35 an hour is. When you want to come in with an event, you rent that whether you're an event, if you're a, a membership. So you were definitely trying to rent the gym. Yeah, and on top of your but membership. now we're we're cleaning the bathrooms and we're you know okay, taking care of things and they don't have a staff. So why should we rent it for the same price when we've got to do the work that the staff would do? Yeah, I see. Well, listen, I think that's where, it, I think where there's a little bit of a disconnect and why you know, I mean, if if the, if it was open for an entire year, yes. Okay, the pickleball group now doesn't, I mean, they play, Folks, organize, please. they reserve the space for a couple hours um, right. during the week, just like a pickup basketball league occurs and some other things. Right. They don't pay any additional cost to do that. So what Andy is saying is if it was open year round, you'd have your year round membership fees, but there would be no additional cost that any of the pickleballers would play, except for if they had the tournaments or anything where there would be people coming that are maybe non-members that would have to come and have a, either a one-time access fee, the $5 walk-in fee for the day, or maybe it's the tournament charge. You know, so that would be the difference. So if we were open one whole, you know, 365 days or, you know, whatever, 12 months out of the year, um, they wouldn't have to rent the gym to play pickleball, their membership fees already included. So like right, right now, it's $100 for a person to, to, to do a full year membership. They can use the gym seven days, seven, if we're open seven days. I mean, for the most part, we're open seven huh. days a week. They could spend the entire time, you know, I mean, whatever, 40 hours a week there if they want it, um, or two hours a week. It doesn't matter. It's their choice. Yeah. They have unlimited that? membership for that hundred dollars. But also, so that, that would go up if it was more. If well, right. If it was twelve months, too. it would obviously right. go up. Yeah, right. right. So, but, so if it was open year round, you would have membership fees hmm. that would amount to a higher amount. Correct. Because they're paying for twelve months instead right. of six months. Right. So, costs are offset a little more when you have all those membership <laughs> fees coming in for those times. That. that All that we're talking about will go away if that happened. All of this I wouldn't matter anymore. Only if, so. well, that's what we'll discuss during the work session. Right. But as far as your current yeah. issue right now. Yes. Motion, support. No, who would we get support from? I support it. You're supporting it. And that and is treated just like the Warrior Pavilion, and write yes. a lease $35 based $35 on it at $35 an hour and discuss that at the work session. And put it on the agenda for the future. And at, I'll amend to say at the work session we'll discuss a rate for the off season oh my God. of the community center for non profit <laughs> groups only. Mm. It catches the Why video. Too. <laughs> yeah. You can have insurance, you could have the baseball teams use it as That's a discounted rate, yeah. unsupervised. What if you were a for profit? Yeah, what if it's a for profit? Thirty five dollars an hour. Because I don't see how a non profit and a for profit well, is usually the difference. difference. Little leagues, schools are all nonprofit. Yes. They're a nonprofit. Yeah. There's a distinction there. You have to file a, so a C schedule. That's right. With the 501 C3. And you have to be approved as a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. It's just dif you know, the difficulty. In it. Okay. So, Steve, your motion, just for my own. Let me go back through it. Yeah. <laughs> See if we can do well, the Reader's Digest. Let me just, <clears throat> your motion is to follow the same uh, costs and rules uh, that we use for leasing Warrior Pavilion. And we stick with the regular prices. And you want to talk about this at a I work want to session? add it to the work session where we come up with a rate for the nonprofit groups. How about we just discuss it at use. the work session and leave it at that? And Unsupervised <laughs> agenda. And That's right. Fine. That's what he just said. I thought. Okay. But I'm just going to write, we're going to put it on the work session agenda instead of all of that extra. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. The secretary wants a short. <laughs> uh, roll call, please. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Actually, don't you have to write his motion down the way he said it? 
Yeah. Then he's going to have to write the whole motion down for me because I don't have enough room on my list. Okay, well, technically, you need to put his entire motion well, down. Well, then if you write the whole motion down, I'll put whatever you want that motion to be. Give me a minute. <laughs> If that's his motion. Because then he's limited into what we're going to talk about at the work session if he says, well, well that's his prerogative. Talk about it. We can have a fairly generic topic on the agenda for the work session right. to allow the yeah. Well, that's discussion. what he's trying to get on the minute as well. Well, that's not that his motion, though. Oh, he can amend it. But if he chooses not to, that's fine. <laughs> Might run out of ink. Mm -hmm. This was a fun meeting tonight. Come on. Hi, <laughs> please. It's only going to get better. Uh, it's always the um, ones you think are going to be easy. I think I told you how yeah, to do it. Yeah, it's going to be an hour long meeting. It's just a little I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You read it. Like, we should be done in 30 minutes. <laughs> I don't think we've had one of those in a while. Okay. This is more controversial than the. Don't say it. I was going to say, we'll talk say. about fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> fireworks. <laughs> Don't go there. Steve's hand sore, so Aaron's finishing the motion. <laughs> right? There we go. Yeah. Read your motion. So <laughs> no, just, just exactly just what you voted. And then just pass it, on it down. Okay. No, I should probably have a hard time reading my scribble. Oh, oh God. <laughs> my motion is to treat the community center the same as we treat Warrior Pavilion for use year-round. One, at $35 an hour to use the gym. Two, at the work session, we will discuss an alternate rate for nonprofit groups to use the community center uh, in the off season, support makes sense. Yeah. Quick question: Somebody wanting to rent the Warrior Pavilion for a wedding is that a nonprofit? <laughs> no, I would think it would be not registered. They're not registered as a nonprofit. No, that's not right. So it wouldn't fit. It's a private. It would be a private party. There you go. <laughs> okay, so do I have to do the two roll calls I did over it, or should I start where I left off? Uh, happy to, I'm happy. Ms. Crasco, yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Is this to treat just this instance that way? You're just what he wrote down. The this is going to, doesn't matter who it is. It's, this is to, for use of the community center. Treat it as a warrior prevailing. At the 35 With the exception hours. of the rate, yes. Okay, yes. Claire, I'm sorry to interject here, yeah. but the, the, the rental rates for the Warrior Pavilion are different than 35. I, I oh. specified yes. the okay. rate. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Worstabarth? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Byer? No, I think we should just let them use it for eight meetings in May and 50 bucks a day. Keep it simple. Use the building, but I don't have very much success in voting for the use of the community center. This so is that a, a no? That's a no, a <laughs> long no. Yeah. So, that's goes with everything else tonight, so. <clears throat> All right. Um, I think that's your last item, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it was going to be a short discussion. Yeah. Right now, I feel bad for me. only three items. <laughs> right. All right. Next, we move to the uh, economic development uh, community good. development coordinator. It was a good thing he was on vacation last week, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. All right. So you forgot to say the title, Jim. Oh, all right. Anne's first action item is a 
2016 Venet and uh, herbicide applicator contract. Okay, thank you. Yes. As uh, members of the township board will recall, Lake Pro was hired to assist Venet and Lake with developing and implementing the Venet and Lake management plans. The consultant has completed a competitive bid solicitation for weed control services for 2016 spring summer season. A copy of the RFP was included with my report, and I've also in, um, or I'm sorry, it was included with my report. In preparation for considering award of this contract, I've included the document, which was drafted and approved by the township attorney that was executed in previous years for the same service. The herbicide bid document required the bidders to provide a number of bid alternate items due to the fact that nuisance weed growth varies from season to season as it relates to different varieties of weeds and the size of weed beds that would then qualify for treatment. As such, the varieties, or as, as such, the actual locations, the amount of area to be treated, and the specific type of herbicides recommended will be determined by the consultant in consultation um, with representatives of Vila during, um, during the early to mid spring of 2016 when the um, lake is assessed. In order to provide the consultant and Vila with an a la carte offering of weed treatment possibilities, the bidders have been asked to provide a cost per acre bid price for a variety of weed treatment products. The bid tabulation provides a comparison of contractors' bid prices for various weed control products. The total bid price is only for overall comparison purposes. The consultant expects to utilize only a few of the products and the total area of the treat treatment is expected to be much less with the total bid price um, than that total bid price reflects. The bid documents inform the bidders of these variable conditions. Prior to scheduling the treatment work, the consultant will specify in writing to the contractor the actual number of acres to be treated in view of the nature and extent of plant growth within the lake at that survey time. Included with my report is an email from the uh, consultant along with their evaluation process, bid tabulation, and final re recommendation, along with a letter from the Vila Weed Committee that provides their input, input and preferred direction. Uh, so this evening, I am seeking authorization for the supervisor and clerk um, to sign and execute a contract for hiring Clark to implement the weed control services within Bennett and Lake for the 2016 season. Based on funds available within the SAD parameters, a not to exceed amount on this contract would be $60,000. This approval should be granted with the understanding that minor contract revisions will be needed in updating the previously executed contract. Do we have any questions or comments or discussion of any kind? We've already kind of gone many steps in uh, setting up this uh, weed control program. It's a five-year deal. The, the special assessment district itself is five years, but uh, we basically go up to bid every year, every uh, year. for the herbicide applicator. Okay. Correct. Okay. And as the um, lake manager indicated all three people that bid on this have done um, the herbicide application in the past and they've been happy with their results. So. Motion? So moved. Support. Okay. Moved uh, by Mr. Weed that we go with the Clark firm uh, and that's supported by Mr. Gajewski. Roll call please. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Westerbarth? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. Crasco? Yes. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay. Informational item, uh, lawn maintenance uh, RFPs. Right. It, it actually is going to remain as an informational item um, this evening. A little bit more information will be provided. And actually, um, I was going to request that we uh, add it to the agenda, which has now already changed from a work session on Thursday to a... Uh, uh, special meeting so um, and possibly look at an action item on Thursday um, our work session with the couple items that you've already talked about adding to the work session now makes it necessary to change the title of it from a work session I guess not if we don't make it a choice then we just discuss it more that, that, uh, that is true um, but I think what what Ann is suggesting is that consideration might want to be given to acting on the lawn bids given mm -hmm. the time of year and oh right okay well yeah. my thought I mean I'm providing a little bit more information this evening um, and can answer some questions but 
Um, Bill Hamlin and I um, are still working on evaluating the current operation and would have more information on Thursday. Uh, okay. to look at. Right. And based on timing, um, obviously the end of the month uh, would be close to our next meeting and that wouldn't be enough time then to award the contract and move forward if right. the board were inclined to do that. So, okay. so anyways, um, I guess back to my report. Uh, in uh, March, a request for proposals for the Township Lawn Maintenance Service was issued and a copy of the RFP was provided to the board. Uh, six interested lawn care contractors attended a mandatory site visit on March 16th, at which time a caravan tour was conducted to visit each of the areas identified in the bid documents. Based on the need to clarify specific bid specifications and answer several questions that were expressed during the tour, addendum number one was issued on Friday, March 18th, and was also included in my board packet. The bid sheets required that the bidders provide a per season cost to perform the specified lawn maintenance to all areas currently maintained by DPW, with the exception of the Department of um, Public Works McNichol Street Building and Grounds and the DRMO lo location. A summary of the four bids received was um, included in re my report. And then in addition this evening, I did provide, and I will provide all the bidders um, information uh, Thursday, but the low bid and a summary of the bid sheet. Just so that you under understand, we, we took the, um, and it, you know, a copy of the RFP was included in my information, but we took the areas and broke them down and asked the bidders to give a, a bid response per area. Um, you know, we broke it down by the Warsmith District, the different parks, the downtown district, and so on. The reason being is so that um, we could maybe potentially, if we, if we couldn't move forward with the whole project, um, that we could look at components of um, and compare those to what we're currently doing and see if it would make sense um, from a departmental uh, standpoint to do that. So that's why we did it. And also, especially with the Worsmouth District, there are some properties out there that are for sale. So obviously, if we move forward with selling any of those properties, we'd want to have an identified number so that we could pull off the contract if we were to sell those projects or those properties. So um, right now, like I said, um, Bill and I, have we've requested information from the clerk's office, which Jessica has been great at providing our costs um, in regard to seasonal help for overall parks and rec, and then we broke that down into just the lawn care and we're quantifying those numbers. Um, and right now, you know, kind of the, the initial focus has been like looking at the Worsmith district in the comparison, cost comparison there. So um, I'm hoping to have uh, more of a recommendation and Bill Hamlin has also said he could be in attendance for Thursday morning to answer any questions. If you would be willing to put it on the agenda, I guess, for Thursday. Okay. I just wanna say, Ann, this, I love this, this is very, nice that it's broke out and you can see the bid amounts for each section yeah. it's very enlightening mm -hmm. definitely and, and I think when I, I, I guess I should have got all four bidders to give you yeah, I'll give you all four bids and it's not like it's a secret or anything but it kind of gives you a, a good overview there was as you saw from the summary there's two very close together there was one quite a bit out there and one way way out there um, but it does kind of quantify um, you know, and we also did maps, you know, just as for instance, but I'll, I'll bring these as well. On the caravan tour, we had made maps of all the areas and identified in green where they were mowing. When you get out there and you look to see what is actually being taken care of, there's, there's a lot that were, you know, we sat down with Bob and Bill and I this morning and just the Worsmith District alone um, is about, when you break down roughly the acreage, almost 70% of what they're mowing um, as a whole. Is taken care of, and when I say the Worsmouth District, that's the 8,000 area. That's the ball fields, everything. Veterans yeah. Park. The Veterans yeah. Park, mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot out there. Yeah, the ball fields alone are like 46 acres. So. Do we have anyone from the the bidders that's uh, present here tonight? We have one of the yep the second yep yes yep. Mm -hmm. Do you care to make any kind of comment? Um, no, at the moment, I just... Okay. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Yeah. Sorry you uh, just sit through such a long... Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, like I said, I think it was you that called today, and I said, oh, it should be about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. Sorry. We didn't know we were going to get ourselves into such a pickle. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. 
And of all day, actually, this mandatory site visit that we had on that date, it was like a monsoon. I mean, and these. these oh, we like, saw you guys out there. We were at. Uh, it was yeah. It was quite a quite a voyage around, but um, we went to every site and walked it. And, yeah, it's been a lengthy process, but. So does that work um, session have to be turned into a regular meeting? Can we just have the work session or the regular meeting scheduled to be at a time after the work session? So we have a work session, and then we have a regular meeting. A, a special meeting, yes. What we could do is, I, I'm thinking maybe 11 o'clock, give them all the things that we need to talk about, and then we can recess the work session if need be to go into the special meeting, then come back. Okay. If that's acceptable to the board. So we're going to have that's a special meeting me. agenda and everything, then, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. So we'd have a, so we do the work session at nine, and then a special meeting at 11. At 11, okay. Yeah. Okay, Ann, uh, your final item involves uh, improvements at the skateboard park down at uh, Oscoda Beach Park. Right, well, I think we've unofficially talked about this, but I just wanted to make sure that the board was aware that we are, um, even though it doesn't look like it, we are supposed to be getting our skate ramps delivered and installed Monday. Um, the hmm. old ramps were removed, the area has been prepped, so uh, the company is scheduled to deliver and install on Monday, April 18th. Um, those are the new obstacles and ramps. And then we actually have the contract all executed um, with Butterson Contracting for the retaining and uh, seating wall that is, again, the full length of the east side of the um, mm -hmm. concrete slab, which is about 120 feet long. They are ready to move forward when the weather allows. So um, contract signed, ready to go. So okay. all of that will be happening this spring. All right, um, then uh, we have no uh, ordinances, ordinances or resolutions, so we're moving to other. And uh, update on our water situation. Well, in particular, the thought uh, in placing this item on the agenda was to make the board aware of a discussion that occurred at the Huron Shores Regional Utility Authority meeting last week. Um, specifically, the authority uh, owns a 12-inch main that crosses the old golf course and goes in the back of the base along Bissonnet Road. It's considered primary main under the authority's policy. and. We've included uh, uh, communication from uh, our uh, operations manager, uh, regional operations manager, which outlines that policy and process. And, and basically the reason for the topic being broached was there are some areas that have uh, private wells that, that are going to require uh, at some point um, consideration of extending municipal service. So question was posed as to what might be the position of the authority in terms of the township connecting to this main. Normally, because it's primary main, residential service taps wouldn't be allowed. So basically, as I understand it, the authority has uh, indicated that they would be willing to designate it as a secondary main, which means we would become responsible for operation, maintenance, and replacement. They would continue to own it. Um, those are the two categories, primary and secondary. They would be willing to make that designation um, if and when we are willing to commit to accepting those responsibilities. So uh, moving forward as we talk about the potential for uh, water main extensions in that area, that, that's the position of here on shores. I, I note also that um, because of the uh, expanse of pipe running across the golf course, there may be some considerations in terms of benefit to the community in moving ahead with this uh, particular concept in that regard also. Undoubtedly that, that former golf course property at some point, not undoubtedly, but it seems likely that municipal service would benefit its development. So we don't uh, need to act, that was not intended, but wanted to make the board aware of it because that could be a key piece in the strategy to try and deal with the situation with the private walls. At least some of them would be affected here. <coughs> and I yep. note that Ms. Garnum is in attendance. Yeah. Care to add anything or correct anything? 
Thank you. <laughs> Bob, how many people are taking advantage of the water from the community center? Um, not many. I think I heard four. Oh, well, four out of all them. Well, well, <coughs> uh, that were tested. I think twelve vouchers have been given, and four people have taken. I advantage. mean, twelve different people have been given, right, or households, four of which have. Hmm. We well, still have people down south, right? Yeah. If 24 I'm people, sure and if 24 people got notices, don't drink your water, don't cook with it, why were only 12 people given? Because as Aaron mentioned, only, only some were back in the area, I believe. So. Well, I thought the 24 were, uh, notices were given to people that were here, and the people that were mm -hmm. snowbirds still in the south did not get any letter like that. Am I wrong? Um, I thought the, tw the 24 wells that were tested were people they could get a hold of. They were unable to get a hold of the other oh, ones. Oh, even a phone were, call to Florida right, counts as a right. contact. Okay. Mm -hmm. To get in wow. to be able to make right. contact, right? So yeah. I believe 12 vouchers have been given mm -hmm. and four of which have been used. That's not to say they're not seeking water from neighbors or something we have sure. no way of knowing you know if they have a sure. cousin that lives in you know someplace else or whatever you know, yeah. or okay any further questions yeah bob do we have an update from representative stamos where he's at with the legislation we don't we've not heard anything we continue to, to talk to people i know last week uh, jim and ann met with uh, the u.s congressman we continue to advocate but no specific update on the legislation can we find out? Sure. An update for the next meeting. Steve, did you ever get an answer from the representative that you sent? I did. Um, Mr. Colwell said he was going to get with Mr. Stamos. So Mr. Colwell's in the Senate, but they were going to push together. So I'll follow up with Mike tomorrow. I'll be down in, down in Waterford. And board members, as as Bob indicated, uh, uh, U.S. Congressman Dan Kilby uh, was here in town, uh, did meet with us a couple hours or so, mm -hmm. you know, and I've received uh, two phone calls from the office of uh, U.S. Senator Gary Peters about our water situation. So we got a couple of feds that are interested in our situation and uh, seem to be willing to help us out. We'll see. <laughs> Thanks for the update. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> We're at our second public comment. Anybody? <laughs> okay. Uh, board comments. Yeah, I got a couple items from the Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, they put the questionnaire together for home business special land use permit application, which is available now. It's kind of self-explanatory. A few questions on there. It'll make it a lot simpler to get going on that. And then uh, Spicer was in Monday, and we got the uh, master plan survey updated, and that should be available next this week or next week? Uh, next, week? next week? Next week. So we're moving forward on stuff. Hopefully it gets done in plenty of time so we can review it. So the survey will go out to the public next yes. week? Yes. Yeah. And how will that be uh, promoted? All kinds. I mean, it's going to paper. It's going on. We're going to try to get on the sign out here uh, on the uh, website and advertise it all over the place. And it's only a 25 25-amp. 25 questions so it's pretty simple pretty simple take and about five minutes of people's time to fill it out the questionnaire is for what questionnaires for the home business land thank you for giving us an update we had one for the planning board a long time <laughs> <laughs> next oh. month's another month <laughs> <laughs> okay anyone else me. 
I just want to remind everybody, if you want to have fun like we all had tonight, <laughs> feel free to come down and get your packets for your petition. All seven positions on the board will be available this year. This is our four-year term. So, want to join the fun? Just That's let right. us know. <laughs> It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter, folks, uh, either on TV or in this room. Uh, there, there may be positions here that are vacant, uh, or and even if they're not, you, even you if they're not, don't us. let that determine whether you jump in or not. No. You know, right. we can we can be removed, <laughs> but uh, anyway. Uh, so can we trade. Trade. <laughs> <laughs> Well, think it over. You have until the 19th of April. 19th of April at 4 o'clock. They have to be in after that. You have to run as an independent. That's not due until July, but you won't be on the August ballot. You'll only be on the November ballot. This is real complicated, so if you have any questions, just give us a call. But, yeah. Okay. okay. Joe Millage be on the ballot, or could it be this? No, there's no Millage Joe we're talking about. Or Oh, yeah, yeah, but but referring well, to the community center oh. discussion, but oh, I is don't it know potential? What to, there's some lead up time to that, um, mm -hmm. and I, I wish I could tell you specifically what it is, uh, but I think it's usually like 90 days or something before yeah. before the ballots come out. I think is they yeah. need at least a minimum because they have to be able to check everything out. But. Uh, is there a, a, a petition process that's tied in with that? before it can get on a ballot or anything? I don't think so. I think if they just want to put it, they have to write up the, the wording and, and submit it to the county. Okay. So if a proposal went in, it could still be addressed this year. A call to the county clerk in Tawas City would probably help yeah, you a lot. that'd be your best bet. Okay. Okay. Because I don't know when the deadlines are and, and, and what the qualifications are. We don't handle that here. That's all down at the county level. So. All right. Anything else, board members? If not, I need a motion to so move. say good night. Support. All right. mm -hmm. <laughs> we are adjourned.